So you see, you have life. You have a bird. And on the left, you have one plus one equals two. And I'm sure you think there is no connection between those two aspects. Mathematics is created by the masculine mind, the mind of rationality, and life. Who knows who created it? Man thinks we create it, but this remains to be seen. Anyway, life is flexible, life is ever-changing, life is a bird, a cloud. Life is the smile of a little baby. Life is resilient. Mathematics is not resilient. Mathematics is hard as a rock. How can the two connect? Well, science has told us that the left brain is the seat of masculine rationality. And the, the right hemisphere is the seat of many art forms like poetry, dance, as we just saw, painting, sculpture. And you see, science tells us that mathematics is not for women. So here I am, a woman, a mathematician. I have all it wrong. I should not be here. <laughs> but of course, the people from TEDx, they know better. And maybe it's possible that the two languages of the left and the right hemisphere talk to each other. This is conversations of cultures. They do talk, certainly at a subconscious level and sometimes at a conscious level, and this is what the artists are telling us. And also what mathematics is telling us. So today, I want to take you on a journey, a journey which shows that mathematics can be practiced by anyone. Mathematics is the language of life. This is the hidden language which works at the subconscious level for all of us, because we are here on Earth. And this language can be understood by anyone. You think you do not understand mathematics, but in fact you do. If you did not, you would not be here. It's impossible to be alive and not to understand mathematics. So, my story this afternoon starts 40 centuries ago, in a land which is known today as Iraq, but was known as the land between the two rivers, Mesopotamia. In that land, the art of computing was considered as a feminine attribute. It was represented by a symbol, a goddess, the goddess Nisaba. She was the goddess of the crops, of preparing meals, of housekeeping, of taking care of everyday life, including computing. She was the sister of Enki, the god of wisdom. And in Mesopotamia, to the amazement of the scientists, they used base 60 to represent numbers. Now, I'm sure you have been told that num we, we use base 10 because we have 10 fingers. So I don't know how Sumerian people were built. Did they have 60 fingers? I doubt it, according to the representations that we find in sculptures. So there must be another reason. Where did they get that amazing base 60? 
you say, base 60. Well, we still use base 60 to measure time. We have 60 minutes to an hour and 60 seconds to a minute. So it has survived 40 centuries. Do you know of many human endeavors which have survived that long? It means something for the evolution of, ma of uh, society, civilization, and for the role of mathematics behind. Mathematics is like the matrix of life, the hidden source, the reservoir. So, as I said, this story starts 40 centuries ago, where the priestesses of the goddess Nisaba invented and proclaimed five rules. They were using numbers written in base 60, as I said, and those five rules are addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, square root. Sound familiar? Yes, of course. This is exactly the operations which are programmed into any basic calculator, and they are certainly on your mobile phone. So again, you see something which survives for four millennia. It's a long time for, for humanity. It may be not much for geology but, and the Earth, but for humanity, yes. So, starting from these known historical uh, origins, the art of computing developed over the centuries through the work of generations after generations of dedicated mathematicians. But the road was not at all obvious. The road was not flat. It was all bumpy full of pitfalls and dead ends and bifurcations and God knows what and I'm not sure and uh, is it, am I correct? Should I do that? Should I do this? It was a lot of soul searching, a lot of passion, faith, emotion. Everything was mixed together in the minds of those mathematicians. There were even intellectual rioting and wars. Mathematicians are really just human beings like anyone else. They fight a lot. They defend their territories. They don't like new ideas. They stick to the past, just like we do. So let me tell you about two stories which were absolutely crucial in shaping the European culture. The first one is zero. Well, you are going to say, what about zero? Zero is just a number. It's, in fact, it's not a number. It's a philosophical concept, which means you call into existence the non-existent. It's a basic contradiction which the Greeks were not ready to accept. This is why they did not have the number zero in their mathematics. But once you accept zero as a number, thanks to the, the Indians, you can write equations and then you set mathematics into motion. You can somehow model evolution. And the next step, the next question, which was absolutely crucial, uh, happened in the 16th century, when the Italians were trying to solve the quadratic equation x squared plus 1 equals 0, or, if you will, x squared equals minus 1. Well, impossible. A square cannot be negative. 
How come? I mean, they needed that solution to solve equations of higher degrees. So they invented a symbol, which is called square root of minus one, and it's represented by I, the first letter in the word imagination. You see imagination at work. Real numbers are on the real line, and they are really the way we think linearly because of time. Now, the complex numbers, they fill the complex plane, which is a flat area, in unbounded, but they lose order. Okay, they lose order. But they gain a lot of things. They help us understand all wave propagations. They help us understand light, music, sound, television, GPS, the internet. Can you imagine a life without internet? Well, thanks to the complex numbers. So, you see, ideas which make no sense, in fact, they are extremely important. You have to work. It took three centuries to be able to extract the meaning from complex numbers because it was really blocking. But they succeeded and they opened the Pandora box of the world we live in now. There may be a darker side to the evolution. You see, the evolution is not just a rosy ascent. It may be sometimes a little more difficult. The evolution, I've shown to you that logic evolves in the mind of mathematicians, hence in the, mind of, in the minds of humans, as time passes. And because of the evolution of the logic, this creates the possibility of invention, cre creativity. If you rule out the evolution of logic, you get dry mathematics, the mathematics of the computer. A computer just repeats. Rep repetition replaces invention. It freezes imagination. And despite the fact that you may freeze imagination. Our society is computerized at lightning speed. And there may be a danger. We just have to be aware of using the tool positively and not negatively. This computerization is done in the name of progress. Is it progress, really? For the computer industry, I'm sure it is. But what about for human society? What about for our children? Do we want for them a nightmarish future where a handful of financial tycoons are creating an artificial reality where man is treated as a thing, as a market product? I'm not sure I want that for my own grandchildren. To conclude, let me say to you that, in fact, mathematics is an ally to understand life. Be mathematics can go beyond any technological device. How, intelligent, how, how much in intelligence we put in a machine, the intelligence of man will always be larger will always see further than the machines that we create. Life has no limit. Mathematics has no limit. And you can see on that picture two equations, which are a reflection on the first one. And the, the first one was supposed to be exact. If you change in the tiniest possibility, the equality, one plus one equals two, it becomes wrong. Now, what light is telling us is that one plus one 
belongs to the interval 0, 4. And this is called interference between waves, between light waves, constructive and de destructive interferences. So what I want to suggest to you is break the laws. Divide by zero. Get to infinity. That's the future of humanity. Thank you very much. Thank you.